Hey, what's happening, YouTube? What's going on, guys? Good morning. It is early Tuesday morning, another chilly day here in Chicago. I think the whole country is about to get a get a cold spell here. I uh, got a little presentation for you guys. Figured I'd share it with you guys while I had my morning coffee here. Just made some Pete's pour over coffee. Uh, but in today's video, I wanted to talk about SEO for DuckDuckGo and what you should know about DuckDuckGo SEO. I really didn't even intend for that to rhyme. Uh, we're going to talk about improving your site performance and visibility on the DuckDuckGo search engine. Now, uh, spoiler alert, uh, SEO best practices and such are pretty much going to be similar across the board. Um, what you're doing SEO-wise for Google is going to be very similar for DuckDuckGo, but there are a couple of fairly big differences uh including how DuckDuckGo values backlinks versus how how uh google values backlinks as well as one of the other big areas where things differ a little bit is going to be with uh like like geo searches and local searches so DuckDuckGo doesn't track people it doesn't know where people are so if you're a local business trying to attract people you're probably going to want to target keywords like coffee roaster um you know Evanston, Illinois, as opposed to just Coffee Roaster, because unlike Google, DuckDuckGo doesn't know exactly where you are. You know, when we talk about who are the big players in the search engine game, I'm guessing most people would probably say like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. And let's be real, right? Like even though Bing and Yahoo may make it into that top three category, at the end of the day, like 99% of people are, are using Google. And the stats might be a little bit different than that, but the vast majority of people are using Google. That said, DuckDuckGo has been rising in popularity and has been gaining a lot of users in recent years. And uh, in the past year, it's grown even more. I, I don't think DuckDuckGo is going to overtake Google or dominate the, uh, the search engine game. Uh, but I do think with people becoming more concerned about their online privacy and being tracked, I do think we're going to see a lot more people migrating over to DuckDuckGo. Uh, you know, I think it's no secret that websites and apps track us. I forget if I posted this video in my comment section or my community section of this YouTube channel. Uh, but with Instagram's recent terms of service, I mean, shit, they're allowed to read your text messages. They're allowed to look through your phone book. Uh, they can look through your photo galleries. They can even look at you through your front facing camera. Uh, Facebook pretty much from the beginning of their company has been in trouble for violating people's privacy. Uh, I know everybody in Illinois is getting a $400 check for Google illegally using facial recognition technology on them. Uh, more recently, we did the video about how the Flow app was selling data to Facebook and uh, I want to say Google and other sources as well, even though that they said they wouldn't share private data. Uh, so the Flow app, which is like a period tracking app, was telling Facebook um, when your girlfriend or wife was ovulating, I'm not sure if Mark Zuckerberg, uh, wants to cuckold us all. And that's why he wants to know or whether he wants to market them when they're more emotional at certain times of the month. Uh, but it's no secret. Our data is being harvested and sold. And so a lot of people are being more, are becoming more concerned about this and are using search engines like DuckDuckGo. So I think as we move into the future, more people are going to start using DuckDuckGo and also, I think there's certain segments of the population that are more likely to, to use uh, DuckDuckGo. And depending on what your website is about or depending on what your business is, uh, the crowd using DuckDuckGo may be more likely to buy your product. So I'm guessing somebody who uses DuckDuckGo is probably a little bit more tech savvy. Uh, I'm guessing they're somebody who values, you know, freedom and privacy. You know, maybe somebody who's a libertarian, somebody who's probably into guns. Um you know, so depending on what you sell, you want to, you might want to put more emphasis on trying to rank in DuckDuckGo. So let's uh, see if we can go on to the next slide. So DuckDuckGo is growing. Uh, it's got 100 million users per month. In January of 2021, DuckDuckGo hit 100 million users. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, not per month, per day. In January of 2021, DuckDuckGo hit 100 million users per day for the first time. DuckDuckGo has been attracting more users and will continue to grow as be people become more aware of data and privacy concerns with Google and big tech. Uh, so DuckDuckGo is getting bigger. DuckDuckGo, uh, one thing that's unique about it uh, over other search engines is they value your privacy. DuckDuckGo never stores your personal information or search history. They don't track your IP address unless you click on an ad, in which case they need to track it to uh, for you know ad attribution. But uh, other than that, they don't track your, your IP address, your location, your search history. Uh, it doesn't follow you with ads or track you across the internet. 
And uh, DuckDuckGo has a simple mantra, no tracking, no ad targeting, it's just searching. And uh, the chart, uh, I had to rearrange this, I said the chart below, but actually the chart to the left uh, shows the search engine's growth, and you can see it's on a, a steady upward path here. Uh, DuckDuckGo's market share pales in comparison to Google, Yahoo, and Bing. However, it is growing, and depending on your customer base, privacy may be very important to them, and may, they may be more likely to use DuckDuckGo. Uh, so here we can see kind of like the, the market share of Google versus uh, Bing versus, I can't read what that one is, versus, uh, I think here's DuckDuckGo. But you can see DuckDuckGo has a very small percentage of... Uh, of the user base when it comes to search engines. Now, here's one of the downsides of DuckDuckGo. Uh, Google spies on you, uses your data, sells your data, tracks you all over the place. And even though this is a negative if you're concerned about privacy, one of the nice things about it is, is it provides a very good uh, searching experience, right? Google knows you, it knows what you're into, it knows what you're searching about and therefore it can provide very good search results for you. I would almost compare it to this. So, you know, when you log into your net, your Netflix account, your suggestions on your Netflix account are gonna be geared towards you. Now, imagine you go over to a friend's house or a family member's house and you log on to their Netflix account and you're like, what the fuck is this? You're like, you know, when I go onto my Netflix account, it's recommending, you know, Goodfellas and Breaking Bad and all these shows that I'm into. And I go, I go over to a friend's house and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting recommended like all these uh, rom-coms and dramas. Like, what well, you know, what the fuck is this? Uh, obviously, you know, Netflix is tailoring their suggestions to that person. A uh, little bit of a different scenario than with search engines. But my, but my point here is because Google doesn't value your privacy and does track you, they actually are able to provide a very good search experience. Uh, so DuckDuckGo, the positive about it is, uh, you know, you have some privacy and anonymity on there. Uh, the downside is by not sharing data and not being tracked, uh, your search results aren't going to be tar as targeted towards you, and you're going to have to be a little bit more thoughtful with your with your uh, your web searches. So what you need to know about, you know, how to be more visible, how to rank better on DuckDuckGo. Uh, DuckDuckGo gets its results from more than 400 sources, ranging from crowdsource websites to its own crawler, uh, DuckDuckBot. Because it focuses on privacy, it doesn't know where the searcher is located. And this is one of the big differences between uh, Google and uh, Google and, and DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo doesn't know exactly where you are. Uh, so we'll get into this in a second. But uh, one of the things with DuckDuckGo is, you know, if I search uh, coffee roaster uh, or coffee roaster near me, you know, Google knows that I'm standing under the awning of a taco shop at, you know, 18th and Ashland. And Google will serve me results of coffee roasters near that location and may even give me a place across the street or a couple hundred yards away. DuckDuckGo, because they don't track me, they, they may roughly know my geolocation. They, they'll probably know what state I'm in. They may even know like what, what region of the country or what city I'm in, but they don't know exactly where I'm at. Uh, so it's important uh, when searching on DuckDuckGo to give some additional clues. So rather than just typing coffee roaster or coffee roaster near me, uh, I may type something like coffee roaster Chicago near West Side or something like that. So why does this matter to you as uh, an SEO, uh, a marketer, somebody who's trying to rank well in Google, somebody who's trying to get your business seen? You're going to want to target keywords, um, you know, like coffee roaster 18th and, and ashland or coffee roaster near west side chicago uh so how to approach seo for DuckDuckGo? we're basically going to be touching on four categories or bullet points here uh attract quality links that's one of the differences too is how google and DuckDuckGo look at backlinks and, and kind of score or gauge backlinks uh know your searcher's intent optimize for bing because uh DuckDuckGo in it kind of partners with and pulls a lot of data from bing and then for claim and update your Apple Maps because for map type, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Because for like map type services, uh, DuckDuckGo uses Apple Maps. I'm not an Apple user. I don't know a ton about Apple, but I have heard Joe Rogan and others say that one of the reasons that they use Apple is Apple doesn't track you as much as Google and Apple Maps doesn't share data and is much more private. So Number one, attract quality links. This is basically SEO 101, and regardless of which search engine we're trying to uh, to rank on, you know, backlinks are important. Acquire quality links from reputable sites. Uh, links should be helpful, high quality, and natural. 
build links based on Bing's best practices as opposed to Google's best practices, i.e. go for quantity over quality. Don't place as much importance on anchor text diversity. Bing does count and factor social media links and social signals. So there's a couple fairly big differences here. Uh, when it comes to backlinks, Google is going to value the quality of backlinks kind of based on domain authority and, and page, uh, page rank or page authority over uh, just a sheer number of backlinks. Bing, on the other hand, which is kind of what DuckDuckGo is using. Uh, sorry, my alarm's going off here. Uh, Bing, um, you know, DuckDuckGo kind of runs on top of Bing to an extent, uh, and Bing values quantity over quality. That doesn't mean you go buy a bunch of crappy backlinks off Fiverr for $5, right? That doesn't mean that whatsoever. But you should place more of an emphasis on a quantity of backlinks over quality or DA score of those backlinks. Um, Bing doesn't value, or Bing slash DuckDuckGo doesn't place as much uh, importance on anchor text, anchor text being like the words in a hyperlink. And uh, Bing also does factor social media links and social signals, which is something Google doesn't do. So in, in terms of backlinks and SEO, you'll often hear people say, oh, you know, social media backlinks are kind of pointless. They don't really do anything. Uh, it may play a small role in Google SEO, but it, it's pretty unimportant. Uh, whereas DuckDuckGo slash Bing is going to place more importance on social media links and social media signals. Number two, know your searcher's search intent. Because DuckDuckGo doesn't know a searcher's exact location, searchers will often adjust how they conduct their searches. A DuckDuckGo user might add a location-related word to a search query, i.e. Dentist Chicago or Dentist Chicago, Illinois, as opposed to a Google search, which might be Dentist or Dentist Near Me. Um, any SEO tool like SpyFu, SEMrush, or others uh, may help people understand what people are searching for. Basically, you can see uh, what searchers are searching for, how many searches there are in a given month, and then you can kind of decide which keywords to uh, to try to go after. Uh, optimize for Bing. DuckDuckGo does pull some info from Bing, so be sure to follow Bing SEO best practices. Make sure you submit an XML sitemap. Um, make sure it's air-free and submit that to Bing Webmaster Tools. Also, use Bing Webmaster Tools to check your site's health. And then lastly, number four, claim and update Apple's map listings. If you haven't already claimed your Apple Maps listing, you can do so at mapsconnect.apple.com. Claim your business name, your business address, your phone number, your hours, your business category, your website, and your social media profiles. And uh, keep DuckDuckGo on your radar. Much of SEO remains the same across different search engines. However, there are some small differences among them, such as Google valuing page rank and site quality over the sheer number of links, uh, whereas Bing and DuckDuckGo preferring a quantity of links over necessarily the quality of links. I think the biggest takeaway is for local businesses by adding a location to search queries or targeting longer tail keywords that are location based. And DuckDuckGo will continue to grow in popularity as Google, Facebook, and others abuse their powers uh, and invade people's privacy. So keep that in mind when working on SEO. Uh, that's all I got for you guys today. My alarm clock's going off in the background, so I got to turn that off. If, uh, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button below, ring the bell. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.